all right guys well how are you doing today so what I have for you guys today it's a uh, installation of a uh, I'm working on a 6L80 uh, 6L80 and it's it's a performance built uh, transmission that I'm doing uh, it's a 6L80 it's on a pickup truck you know but the guy he's a, he's a young kid so he gets on it pretty hard so uh, I'm doing an installation of the newest kit that Transgo have and uh, it comes in this uh, big box right here and I'm gonna get close to the camera here so that you guys can see what what part number this thing is if I don't get a lot of glare but it's a is the toe and pro it's called toe and pro so it's the uh, 6l80 dash toe and pro so this is what we're gonna be installing on that uh, on the valve body I'm gonna, I'm gonna situate you guys over there on the bench and uh, I got my I, the, the the unit is almost ready i got it to the point where uh for the installation of the of the shift kit and this is a performance shift kit and uh here's the pump already i got the pump cover over there well the, the pump body over there uh this is the pump cover and the transmission it's just already built all i got to do is just put the stator on the on the pump and uh, assemble it put the transgo parts in there put the transgo parts on the valve body and uh, this is my first time using this particular kit and I always use let me see I got some here all of my units I use a lot of their stuff so this is 6T70 so all of my units take this this is just a regular uh, shift kit from them and then the the CS dash TCC which is the clutch two clutch select valves come in this kit and the TCC valve come in this kit and uh, on this one you got the AFL valve and the boost valve and the PR valve <clears throat> so all my units take this and I usually order them like three or four at a time because we do minimum of three units a week I mean that's how bad these things are failing now I mean and I believe every shop in the United States, uh, they have a lot of these units in their shops. And these are really, really good. Actually, the pump, the pump for this one, uh, the pressure regulator valve, <clears throat> uh, I, did a, a, I just did a little short video on vacuum testing the PR valve. And uh, as you're going to see that, <laughs> I really wanted to open uh, this on camera, but I mean, it is what it is. And I got the, the sheets already a little bit full of grease or assembly lube because I was vacuum testing that and, and I was going through the, through the installations here. What I like about this is that uh, the boost valve, the ratio has been increased. Uh, and we'll go through that. The PR valve looks almost the same. I mean, I'm not sure if there's any differences or not, or not on the PR valve. Uh, the seat spring, the bumper spring where we use the original one, and the new spring is red, which I, I'm, I have no clue. I mean, it might be the, the same calibration as the other one. <clears throat> uh, right here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this right quick. This is must, a must read. And I'm glad I read this, and I'm glad my parts did not get here uh, the way I ordered them. So it says a must read. This kit was developed and tested in several vehicles stock and modified. V6 and V8 Camaros, Tahoes, work trucks, and one very fast blown 5.3 short bed with just over 500 rear wheel horsepower. We used OEM clutch plates and counts. So in other words, no, no frictions were added. Uh, keep all the weight plates. So like stock they kept all the weight plates used OEM clutch clearances and loved the way they worked no bind ups or bangs or clangs or any hint that clutch capacity was lacking now I learned that on the on the Allison shift kits I mean uh, I know there's some kits and I've done it with the more clutch capacities you know Alto has their uh, I forgot the name of it the power packs or whatever they're called and uh <clears throat> but with their shift kits it's probably not even necessary to do all, go you know to go that route uh for applications and power levels listed above 
adding clutch plates and removing weigh plates or reducing clutch clearances is not recommended and can lead to bind ups, bangs, or clangs. See additional info for clutch clearances. And they supplied they supplied the uh, additional info. I mean, uh, most uh, uh, most of the their shift kits they they also come with additional info, like for the uh, uh, six or The uh, I've been using a lot the uh, for the sixty eight RFEs for the diesels, uh, the seven check balls and the five check balls, which is the five five bhp and the seven bhp. I use both of them uh, depending on the application, and I mean. It's, it's got a lot of info <clears throat> now on this one I had ordered for the 456 drum uh, to get rid of the of the wavy plate and also for the 35 reverse Sonics makes uh, makes those parts so that you can uh, get rid of the weight plate you add one extra friction and one extra steel uh, same thing with the 35 reverse the good thing is that they did not make it here and they're not installed so the, the the on the 456 the performance uh uh kit that they sent me was the one that you have to use the wave plate i'm pretty sure i could have modified that thing a little bit and try to squeeze another friction plate without the wavy but i mean i just left it at stock as it is you know but it does have the sonics 456 performance you know with the pressure plate and backing plate for it and it does have the sonics billet aluminum forward piston uh you know because they do break and this is a young kid so he's gonna get pretty he's gonna get on it pretty good all right so uh once we once we go through the through the installation i'm gonna put my uh, uh opinions on it you know while we're doing it and what i would like for transgo to add as well on this uh, it comes with uh, with the cooler bypass, <laughs> and some of you guys already saw the videos that I have on the how to uh, do the cooler bypass, you know. And uh, well, it comes with that; it's included in the kit. And this is a 2008, <clears throat> so I'm gonna have this one left over for another one. And my wife don't want me to touch her Tahoe, but uh, I think this is going on there, and I'll probably film that too. She's gonna get mad at me, but. It is what it is. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <clears throat> yeah, let me set you let me set you guys up over there, and uh, on the bench, and let's go ahead and start installing this uh, performance shift kit. Oh, and it does come with tuning as well. It says that you can get some uh, aggressive uh, one twos and two threes by tuning it and they have a qr code on it you you know snap that with your phone and it takes you to three videos uh for uh for tuning it if you want you know tire chirping one twos and two threes but <clears throat> according to the instructions here as it is this is standalone is going to be perfect so what i'm going to do i'm going to install it on the valve body and the pump of, of course you know install it on the transmission well, in other words, on the transmission. Uh, we're going to install it on the truck. It's going to take a stock torque converter. It's not going to be high performance torque converter or anything like that. So we're going to install it on the truck. Uh, we're going to drive it as it is, you know, with no tuning. And I'm going to get my HP tuners. And we're going to follow the directions that it says here. Just that. Test drive it like that. That's going to be part two or part three. This, the installation for now is just going to be part one drive it like that as it is do the tuning uh that they recommend here and then i guess part three is going to be what i do to the six l ladies because believe it or not with these two items here uh and the tuning that i do i believe that what's in here is very very safe it's very very safe for what i do on the tuning and i guess on part three we'll well, I'll explain that. And as a matter of fact, when I'm, we're installing the parts, uh, we'll go through that too. Uh, and I believe, um, I, I mean, I like the way they, that this is designed. And this is just the fixer upper. You know, those, these two boxes right here, these are the fixer uppers. But you can tune your transmission 
safely with what they have here. That's just my opinion. I mean, Transgo, I mean, if you're watching this, I don't know if it's, uh, <laughs> you think otherwise, but I think it's pretty safe because I, I've done, I don't want to say hundreds of tunes. I mean, I'm probably getting close to a hundred. And once I open my laptop, you're going to see I have a big, long list of trucks that I've done and some Camaros and stuff like that uh, on, on these units. So I do a lot of these. So yeah. Okay. Too much rambling. Let's go to, uh, <laughs> let's go to the bench and let's start knocking this thing out. Since I was vacuum testing, the valve body is super clean. <laughs> I know that's kind of like not cheating but i mean it's not full of oil or anything like that you know that's something that maybe you guys would have liked to see you know got body full of oil you know once you open it up but i put it back together so it's going to be full disassembly and full all that you know all whole nine yards all right so let's get to it all right put you on pause and let's move you all right guys so my compressor's turned off my fan is turned off so i hope that you guys can hear me uh loud and clear and I can see my uh, audio on my camera is capping a little bit to the orange so I hope it does not disturb the quality of the audio uh, but here we are so here's here's the pump that I got assembled the valve body it's nice and clean uh, I took all the assembly lube off the uh, the pump itself you know the blue goo uh, so we are ready. <clears throat> we are ready to uh, start with this. So let's start with the pump because that's just going to take uh, right away. I mean, we'll do that right away. So uh, and that's where they want us to start. You know, step one: assemble EPC relief valve, relief 316 ball and plain spring into new HP bushing, and spread the cotter pins with legs. All right. So let's go ahead and look for that. I want to go ahead and put this piece of paper underneath here for now that there well I'm not gonna use this so let's put it down here too for now put that there all right so the first thing that we're gonna do PR valve so let's get let's look for the PR valve here's the pressure regulator valve and uh, the boost valve. <clears throat> Here's the boost valve. I do have, well, it says right here. I think it's 453. I read it somewhere. It's either here or maybe the video that they have. I think on the video they, they, they mentioned the, the ratio on the, on the boost valve. So I don't see it here. I think it's on their video because they do have a video on this. Uh, I think it's 453 or something like that. You know. But uh, all right, let's go ahead and disassemble our pressure regulator valve. So all you got to do is just push in a little bit, get your magnet, and remove the pin. Remove the pin. I'll just put my magnet here on the side. And uh, let's go ahead and remove all of our parts from our PR system. So we have our original stock boost valve. And uh, I have here one of the, uh, here's the, uh, the spring and the bumper spring. I put the best PR valve in here because uh, that's the last one I was when I was vacuum testing. So these are pretty handy. The mini needle nose. So you can actually grab the va the valve, and uh, sometimes you have to kind of snake it out of there. <clears throat> Unless it's severely worn, I'm going to show you right now one that's severely worn, and <laughs> they fall by themselves. They fall off by themselves. So, come on now. There we go. So, this is the pressure regulator valve. And I have two more here, <coughs> which you probably already saw the video on these valves. If, if your valve is like this one, it falls right off. It's just completely gone. This one is halfway there. 
and this is the best one I got out of these three so uh, and most of them they end up in the trash all right so <clears throat> to assemble this you just get it out of the bag you have a hole in the front and you put the seat the spring seat on the rear so you have a hole in the front you actually have a hole in the rear as well right here too and what this does i mean what i think it does you know is you have this valve right here and as you can see the land is really really short so you have this little hole right here so this is the balance the balance fluid that goes in front of the uh of the pressure regulator valve and if you look at the land it's it's right it's it's right behind the uh the land is right behind the feed hole so uh make sure that this feed hole it's uh it's not plugged up and uh, some new aftermarket boot i mean pressure regulator valves require you to cross drill this little hole to this passage right here uh, because the land as you can see or the valve spool the valve spool is longer so in in order this is going to be plug in the hole so in order for that what transgo did uh, they just uh, made this valve hollow and now they have uh, another hole right here and they feed the fluid the balance the, the balanced fluid through the inside of the valve to the front of the valve so I mean that's just my take on it I could be wrong I don't know I mean don't take my word for it but that's the way I understand it so now we're gonna uh, install so this is the red spring we're going to install the uh, booster spring like that install it on our pump you went right in as a matter of fact I had one of these and when I did the video on the vacuum testing I actually uh, <laughs> vacuum tested one of those all right so this is the uh, actuator fit limit valve we don't need this this not just yet but we're gonna use it uh, our, our boost valve let's open up the baggie the valve is in there and actually so here it is so let's look at the stock ratio of the valve let's take the the valve off the the plunge the valve off the plunger so here we have this one if you try to insert it here I mean it's just the ratio is larger which that's what makes it a performance boost valve go ahead and get rid of this now what we're gonna do put our impact over here or lube over there get it out of the way let's open up the little baggie so we have the ball the spring and the cotter pin drop the ball in there is it coming out on camera yeah drop the ball in there install our spring and I'm going to put this over here so you guys can have a better a better view what I do I got a 45 I press on the spring with my 45 pick and then just get it in there like that and then I get my pocket knife and spread the spread them out And the pliers, I didn't bring no pliers. And I get my pliers. Hold that, hold that thought right there. Don't go nowhere. We ain't done yet. All right. Just any any pliers will do. And just uh, just bend them, bend them backwards. All the way. Or so you can do it by hand, which is a little hard because they are kind of stiff. And I do go all the way back like that so now that we have our ball and spring 
this is a pressure relief valve uh, this is one of the reasons I'm telling you guys that I, uh, the reason that I, I like this because if uh, you have runaway line pressure or anything like that the excessive line pressure is gonna bleed off through this hole and you're not gonna have uh, parts breakage or or anything like that you know with this setup so the first time I seen this I mean I was kind of sold on this I mean I said oh yeah that's a real good idea especially uh, you know like the uh, 4L80s well they don't have this on the 4L80s but I mean uh, there are some that they have this that design which is a pretty good thing it's a pretty good design all right I'm gonna put you guys on pause right quick because I gotta do something right quick uh, but there we go so we've done our pump uh, we have our lockup valve here and then we have another valve here uh, converter charge valve or I forget the name of this thing uh, and then we have a pressure relief which is a spring and a ball which is, uh, which one? Where's it at? I lost it. Uh, well anyways the purpose of this video is not for that the purpose of this video is for that let me put you guys on pause and I'll be right back all right guys I'm back let's go ahead and put this thing out of the way somewhere yeah, put it over there for now I'm not gonna show you the installation of the stator on that thing uh, that's for another video all right so let's go ahead and uh, tear into this let's get a shop towel ready for let me get another one better than this one this is all in pieces Get a shop towel ready so we can put all, all of our set all set all of our bolts on it. The speed handle out of the way. So it's seven millimeters, seven millimeter socket, ten millimeters, ten, and an eight, and then more seven on the bottom underneath. Alright, so we're gonna remove our transmission range sensor. And in order to do that, we need to unplug it first this thing a little bit further back so we can have a little bit more room for the camera to see so we unlock the transmission rain sensor or internal mode switch or neutral safety switch whatever whatever suits your fancy whatever you want to call it it's the same cat but all dusty all right so let's go ahead and remove that now that we have our 10 millimeter socket on the on our tool, let's remove these four ten millimeter bolt with the same one. And what I like to do, I don't know if you notice how I, I set my uh, rain sensor there. That's gonna be one little pile. And uh, that's what I want you guys to do too. So you don't get confused to see where where all these bolts go because they're different lengths. And as you will see here. And for some reason, the manual is wrong, believe it or not. Or maybe when the manual was uh, written, uh, it was a unicorn unit, you know, a very rare unit where these bolts were all different. Uh, I'll probably show you guys that. All right, so let's go ahead and remove our two eights. We don't have to remove that. I always leave it on there. It's not in the way. 8 millimeter socket to take those two out. Let's go ahead and uh, set them down there. As you can see, I'm going to make me another little pile for the Tekken bolts. 7 millimeter socket. Remove all of our bolts for our 7 millimeters. And then I just flip it over like that. And then I unplug my input and output speed sensors. Unplug it just like that. And our Tecum releases. We got our Tecum here. Let's go ahead and just set it to the side. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. You can leave these on there. They're not in the way. So leave them on there. <coughs> Flip it back over. 
remove this uh, five, seven millimeter bolts. And you're gonna see that these bolts are longer than the one on the opposite end of the valve body. Go ahead and remove these. Put them on another separate little pile over there. You can see I got one, two, three separate little piles. So make a habit of that. We're gonna go around all the seven millimeter bolts and then we're gonna split the valve body open. Yeah, my impact does weird noises every now and then. Another little pile on the side. And now we're ready to separate this valve body. Early valve bodies take seven check balls. Late valve bodies take eight check balls. And I'm gonna show you a very, very, even though all the information is there, uh, the way I I the way I do it to identify them faster than quickly is by looking at one hole and by doing so many of these uh, weekly uh, you'll find out that by far away you'll know what's what you have two guide pins so I'm holding the spacer plate and just separating it because our check balls are on this side of the valve body. So now we have our valve body separated in two. Now these are molded valve body gaskets. You don't have to replace them, but if you want to, uh, they also come in the overhaul kit. Uh, for the purpose of this video, it takes a really, really long time to uh, peel this off from here. Uh, it's a bonded plate. Uh, on this video, I'm just gonna show you that we're just going to reuse it for the purpose of this video. Uh, I put this in the cooker, you know, in hot water, and uh, when I'm washing the parts and stuff, and it starts to delaminate or to debond the gasket from the plate, and then you just get your scraper, scrape it off, and then you get your buffing wheel, and clean it up and use your new gaskets if you want to. Uh, if you don't want to go through all that trouble, you can reuse them. There's no big deal, there's no problem. That's why this shift kit does not come with gaskets because this is reusable it's a it's a molded just like your pan gasket on this thing the pan gaskets are re reusable i have a bunch of them hanging right here uh that are some of the new some are used you know but uh sometimes you don't have to change it because they're in really really good shape all right so this is going to be reused as is oh yeah I almost forgot. So we have our valve body, right? And you have your spacer plate sitting here. Now there's only one position where the check ball goes and doesn't go, right? So you lift your plate up. And this one, it's a 2008, so it's obvious that it, it is a seven check ball valve body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the 13, some 13s have it, but most 14 and ups, they have an extra check ball right here. All right, so we lay our valve, uh, our spacer plate on top of the valve body, and we see that that's where that's the extra provision for the check ball on the later models. And the way that I identify this from far away, not far away, but you know, about a foot away or two feet away or three feet away, is about by the hole that's underneath here. See how big this hole is? Big hole, no ball. If this big hole right here looks like this small hole right here, then it takes a check ball. Big hole, two big holes, no check ball. And if you have a little hole like this and a hole like that down here, it takes a check ball. That's the easiest and fastest way that I do and you can you can check on your paper because it comes with uh, with the uh, it, it it always comes with that info of the spacer plates and the valve bodies and to look for that unicorn uh, year model that is very hard to get and 
uh, that we are played. I forgot the year model, but you'll get those unicorn valve bodies every now and there, you know. All right, let's take our check balls out. All of them. All seven of them. And these are four long check balls, so this can be reused, but I got new ones. If you got the yellow ones or the, the bow, they come white on the dealer kits and they turn kind of yellowish. Don't use those. Get some check balls. It would be nice, Transgo, if you would uh, include those uh, check balls in here. I did not see any, but it would be nice uh, because most of the people are going to be you just dropping the valve body or, or maybe not, not installing an overhaul kit, but they want to pull the transmission out for this. You know, uh, a lot of DIYers want to do that or performance enthusiasts or whatever want to do that. So if the check balls are included in the kit, that would be a plus. Okay, that's just my opinion. I'm rambling too much. But anyways, all right, so let's go by the instructions. I mean, sometimes I get carried away. I know where everything goes, but, uh, and I get carried away. Let's, let's follow this here. All right, so it comes with the rotational. If you have a stator, like the early model ones, uh, they have uh, rotational seating rings. It comes with the uh, high temp rings, with the ring expanders. And most of uh, the stators that you'll see, like 90% of the time, they have this non-rotational or the locking rings. So you install uh, the new uh, O-rings that come in the overhaul kit and you install those new. Or you just, if you're just doing this, you don't go through that trouble. And uh, so it comes with these, but mine, this one, 2008, does not take that. Let me remove it from the transmission. I have it over here install on the transmission so this one has uh, locking ceiling rings they, they are not uh, rotational these are non rotational ceiling rings so there's our stator I got to put it together on that pump all right so now that you uh, we've identified what kind of stator we got then we move on to the meat and potatoes of the of the kit Step one, remove and discard original solenoid regulator valve, spring and retainer, I call it actuator feet limit valve, which is the same thing. Clean bore and new parts, install new bushing, valve, white spring, white spring, spacer and gold retainer as shown. White spring, I think the spring is orange. The spring is orange. The lockup valve has the white spring in it. And this one by mistake had two, two torque converter clutch valves in it with the white spring, but that's what it takes a white spring on this. Oh man, so I'm not sure. Well, it's on the valve body, so. I'm going to install whatever's in this bag here. But it says that it's a white spring and I just barely noticed this. It has an orange spring. So the calibration might be a little different than the white spring because it's a different color. And that only makes sense. But I am going to install this on this valve body for now. And I'm going to contact Transgo and see what, what's up with this. Uh, but it's on the valve body, so that's no big deal. The pan can be removed and just take the valve body out and just change the spring, you know, as easy as that. Let's take it out of the bag. Yeah, I barely noticed that. I mean, I had no clue it was going to, going to be that different. All right, so we remove our retainer. Our spring got stuck sideways a little bit when I took this off. So I'm just going to push it out. And I have my pick here so it won't fly off to the other side of the uh, city or town or wherever you live so it's, it's so there we go remove the spring and remove our actuator feet limit valve or solenoid regulator 
So, uh, solenoid regulator, it, it is what it sounds like it is. It is what it means. It regulates, regulates fluid going to your solenoids. So it's a solenoid regulator, actuator, feed limit valve. Those solenoids that you see there on the Tecum, those are called actuators. You got sensors and actuators. You got sensors in the back of the, you have two speed sensors and then you have actuators. You have a uh, internal mode switch, which is a sensor. It senses the uh, range of your shifter. So you have sensors and actuators. Now this one right here, that's why I was saying in the beginning of the video that that's why I trust this, uh, the way this is designed because even though with the tuning that I do, uh, it's very safe because this is already uh, measured. It is a pre-calculated uh, uh, pressure for the, uh, for the solenoids and it prevents them from flooding with fluid. Now, if I were to do, uh, I mean, I've done it with uh, the tuning without that valve, uh, but, and I never had an issue that I've noticed, uh, but this is regulated. So, I mean, that's, that's a big plus. That's a big plus for me. I mean, that's why I like this. And then you have the, uh, the pressure relief, uh, ball and spring on the boost valve. I should have grabbed my other larger screwdriver. Let me get it. Hold, hold that thought. Hold that thought. So yes, uh, Transgo, I'm putting, <laughs> I'm installing the orange spring. And I did not notice that until right now. Uh, and I was reading through this and, uh, yep. All right, so we got our new retainer. We had, now we're gonna do the O-ring end plugs. So we got one, two, three, four. And then we have five and six and seven so we got seven positions for the o-ring and plug one two three four five six it came with six but they send me the extra one or says they send me another baggie and i did not notice that otherwise i would have asked them for it uh all right so let's start with the first valve okay the, the from the top to the bottom and that's the way we got the, the valve body here from the top to the bottom. Uh, but for you guys, just pretend that that spring in here is white because uh, that's what's going to come in your kit whenever you install yours. All right. So let's go ahead and install an O-ring end plug on this uh, valve right here. And this is the uh, CBR1, it's called, or uh, 456 clutch regulator. All right. Let's go ahead and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to push the valve forward a little bit that far so I can get the end plug off with my hand put it on the side get a new o-ring end plug install our end plug we install our end plug push it in a little bit just a little bit so that you can get your uh, your clip in like that and there we go there we go so we got one o-ring name plug let's put this to the side over here now <clears throat> four five six boost we're going to use an orange spray so we get our we, we remove our retainer and remove our spring so the boost valves they both have the same uh weight of spring and it's kind of flimsy like that you know the kind of long and we look at the orange spring that it comes in the kit and it's totally different so it is calibrated for for the 456 456 boost so it does come with boost valves all right so i get my screwdriver and try to get it in there actually i always use my pick but so you just push your spring down and I know that I got the camera on the side because the other short videos that I do are doing with my phone. And I don't have a 
too much capacity on it like I do with a big SD card like this. All right, so we got the 456 boost. Install our orange spring. We leave this alone and we jump to the other one, which is the 2.6 uh, the clutch. So according to Transgo, this is what's gonna give us the uh, tire chirping second gear. All right, so let's remove our valve lineup. So I got my end plug out, which we are going to install an old ring end plug. So 2.6, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to remove the whole valve because the valve comes in the kit. So this is the first one that comes out, which is going to sit it right here. And here's our factory uh, 2 6 valve. I'm going to sit it right here next to it. You can see. All right, let's go ahead and stand this paper over there like that. And it says remove and discard original 2 6 regulator valve, install new 2 6 clutch regulator valve, reuse original spring, short shuttle valve, and retainer. Let's look at this valve. So this is kind of a 2 6 don't have a boost valve. So th I think this is what this is. It's hollow on the inside, and then he has a spring. I'm assuming it has a ball in there too, a spring and a ball. Uh, so we're going to reuse our original spring. I'm going to put a little bit of assembly loop here. Install it. So we install it all the way down. And just uh, play with it. Make sure it's nice and free. And now our sh shuttle valve. Shuttle valve, O-ring and plug, I'm going to grab my clip, let's see if I can do this on camera over here, O-ring and plug in our clip, and what I like to do, I'm going to get this little screwdriver and I'm going to push against the end plug just to make sure that it's properly seated. All right, so we got that. We're gonna throw this over here. And the next one is the 3.5 reverse boost. We're gonna use the uh, blue spring, which is the next one right here. Let's remove our retaining clip or retainer, whatever you wanna call this thing. Remove it. Remove our spring. As you can see, those two boost valves have the same the same spring in it so you don't have like if you're doing a stock build or whatever you don't have to worry about that mixing them up but not on this this is a blue spring the blue blue spring goes here and install our this is gonna be a little tricky doing on camera over here with all that thing flying away just like just like you did <laughs> Yeah, for it to behave, I'm going to have to do it here on the bench. Push my spring down. Get our retainer. Install our retainer on it. All right, what's the next? The next one. So we got our blue spring. O-ring end plug. O-ring end plug and one, two, three, four boost. Oh, there's nothing for that. So two more end plugs. Let's remove this factory end plug. They come out pretty easy, unless you had a bunch of metal in it. Factory end plug. Remove that. Grab another one. And let's move quite along in this. All right, let's install this. And let's do our last, uh, wait a minute. Oh yeah, this one does not take. So we were, we were at the one, two 
one, two, three, four clutch regulator, uh, three, five reverse. Did we already put an plug on this thing? I'm getting lost over here. All right, so we let's let's check it out. I don't think we did. Yeah, we didn't. We skipped that one for some reason. That's why I'm saying, whoa, I did, I, I pulled the wrong one out. So here's our factory one. Remove that. Install this or ring and plug. And we're going to be done with this side of the valve body. What do I do with a clip? That's on top of here. All right. So here we go. Just push it in. There we go. So we got two dial pins or guide guide pins on the on the valve body, which is this one and this one. You know that's what was keeping it together. Uh, so let's repeat this. So we have our uh, actuator fit limit valve with the wrong spring. It came orange. We got our O-ring unplugged on the uh, 456 orange spring on the 456 boost. Uh, two six clutch regulator. We got our new valve, uh, factory spring, and a new end plug. Uh, blue spring on the three five reverse end plug, end plug, and we're done with this side. All right, so we put this to the side over here. So that side of the valve body, that's where the magic happens. That's where the magic happens now the lower part of the valve body which is the new TCC regulator see white spring and we reuse uh, this little valve here and well it actually says reuse the uh, end plug hmm. uh, and here we put two o-ring end plugs but we're gonna put an o-ring end plug here uh, so I noticed that this plunger right here trans if you're listening uh, it would have been nice if you also would include this one because I see them that the anodization, you know, the, the coating on the valve, on some of them they do flake off a little bit and they do uh, get a little bit hung up. Uh, I mean, if you would include that as well, not only on this kit but on the other one, I, I install a bunch of those. Uh, it would be nice if we... Uh, had that replacement just like you do have the uh, the ones for the uh, 41 TEs and the, you know the 453s and the 420s the solenoid uh, switch valve uh, that comes with all three of them I mean it would be nice if it would come with that with that one I mean but that's just my opinion uh, I mean it's something to think about but all right so this valve right here Nothing is going to be done to this valve, but it would be nice if uh, something would be for this valve because this valve is the uh, compensator feed valve, compensator feed the uh, circuit. It gets hung up very, very, very easy. And I keep telling everybody, make sure that you take that valve out and you clean it. I got two guys that are learning this unit and uh, if you don't clean your cooler because you'll see the pan i got pictures of, of pans they're full of metal if you don't clean the cooler right if you don't clean the bell housing right you know where the cooler lines go in and out if you don't clean if you don't clean where the front seal goes which is it gets full of metal if you don't clean real good this unit it'll bite you it'll bite you this valve right here is very 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 sensitive it gets hung up really really easy so i cannot stress that enough uh and i mean if you come up with something you know like a non-stick valve for this or whatever you know uh it would be it would be nice you know to include that in there all right let's let's remove this so I thought I, I thought I was short one end plug, but actually, it doesn't take one here. So the the according to the instruction, the end plugs uh, count is right. 
So I'm talking about this one here. Sometimes it gets chipped on the edges and uh, they get hung up. They do get hung up. Like this one is a little bit rough on the edge uh, on both sides. And you're not supposed to sand or do anything to these because uh, you'll remove more and more of that stuff and you'll ruin that valve. This is our locker valve and I'm going to compare this to the new one and we're going to see that it has more surface area for the wear and this valve according to Transgo uh, it does help with the uh, low RPM displacement on demand and on the tuning I'm going to explain to you guys what that means because the way it is tuned from factory it's kind of ridiculous but I mean I'll that's for another video so here we have more surface area on this part of the valve and the spring now becomes encapsulated in the inside the valve now these two lands look almost exactly the same but this uh, land or this uh, valve spool over here it's a little bit larger than that one this one has a little cutout that I see there on both sides and uh, this one actually has a little step so it's almost similar you know I pay attention to detail and I mean I guess it is what it is I mean it's just me just put a little bit of lube on this thing WD-40 that's what I use I just ran out I'm using that whoops there we go again dropping dropping stuff all right so let's go ahead and uh once I get it in I just go in and out on it just make sure it's nice and free because this valve works a lot. So I know this is a new valve, but just work it in real good, lubricate it, you know, a bunch of times, in and out, in and out. Let's go ahead and lube this up. This one, like I said, I, I would love for this to be included as well because of the chafing that it takes. Now this one is a little tricky sometimes to get it in here. Pass the wear on the bore because I do feel wear on the bore. Even though I vacuum tested this one, it, it vacuum tested good. Uh, let's go ahead and put an O-ring and plug on this thing. So I'm not sure trying to go if the one belongs here or not, but according to that, I just realized that it doesn't take one. But I'm gonna go ahead and put one on. And I don't think it'll hurt any. I guess we'll see the difference in the TCC slip. Okay, so now that we have our retainer all the way, all the way in, I always try to get my end plugs, push them against the retainer, and now we have this nice and free. And what I like to do as well, and I like to do that, do that on the on the valve body itself as well. I like to just blow some air through here and move the valve on both uh, on both areas. So I'm going to plug it with my finger. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but I am stroking that valve. So it has two little ports there. Put air on on this port and put air on that one. On this one here, the same thing. Air here, air here, air there, air, air, uh, air, air. And this one, air through here. And I put my finger in the back and plug the hole. Blow some air through that. You know, stroke that valve. Uh, there's another valve. This one, thus you don't have to cover anything. This one too, you cover the rear of the valve. And... <clears throat> If the air moves it, the fluid will move it. See, let's try that. So let's try this one. There we go. This one. Both holes. This one. And this one, I got to put my finger in the, in the back and t uh, cover the hole. You can hear it also buzzing. This one. Well, this one is a different valve. This is the valve that comes in the kit. 
And this one also, I gotta plug the hole in the back. And then this one. This is just what I do. Let me get one closer to the camera so you can see the valve moving. Hopefully it'll catch it. So see where my... Yeah. Yep, you can see it. That's just my opinion, but that's uh, that's what I do. All right. So I've already, like I said, I mean, I already uh, vacuum tested this. That's why that's why it's so clean, and this is nice and free. Uh, but I'll, excuse me, I'll repeat that again. I cannot stress that enough. Clutch select valves. These are very very uh, important uh, as well. These are our factory springs. I usually remove them both at the same time. They're both the same. That's no big deal. The one on the left, this one, when you take the uh, clip off, the end plug is always stuck for some reason. Right now it came out real easy because I had this thing disassembled. And I, and I cleaned it uh, and vacuum tested it. Uh, so you vacuum test the front and the rear of the valve for, for, for wear. Let's go ahead and remove these valves. Now they are non-stick steel valves. I don't know the uh, all the technicality of it, you know, but they are a different weight as well. They are these are these are very very light. They don't weigh nothing, so I guess the weight as well, you know, causes it to stick a little bit. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's what I that's what I think so it comes with new calibrated springs let's go ahead and get this out of the, the bags I'm just gonna run this quickly on some solvent and just get the coating off of it because they do have a coating and I know I didn't do it on the other one but they do have a coating for to protect it from rust compressor soft so it's not gonna come off now these right here, both of them, I just put them on the edge like that and just drop them. If they bounce, it's free. You don't have to do anything to it. And they have to come out like this on their own, on their own weight. Both of them. If you can do these with the valves, they're in good shape. All right. All right, let's go ahead and install our springs. And these springs, they kind of look the same as uh, as what's on included on their other kit, on the CSV TCC kit. And let's get two more O-ring and plugs. And it comes with extra O-rings. Well, it comes with one extra O-ring, two. All right, let's go ahead and install this here. Just enough to get the clip in. And, oh, I forgot I had this. This just came out. That's a good sign. <laughs> they come out by themselves. All right, I'm going to blow some air here in a little bit to push that o the O-ring in plug out to the rear. Let's go ahead and dump them all in there. And grab one O-ring and one in plug. Oops. I have assembly lube on my glove and two O-rings decided to come and join the game. There we go, dropping stuff again. All right. Let's put some uh, assembly lube on it and install it. Install that and install our retainer. Put those plugs on the side. Get that O-ring in there. There we go. I'm going to blow air 
I have to stroke uh, stroke the valve all the way back to push the see how this retainer it's a little it's a little loose so I need that end plug to be against the against the retainer and this one is nice and snug this one actually moved back so I'm gonna put some air in here and push it out push it against the clip So as you can see, it's nice and tight now. My retainer is nice and tight. So all you gotta do is just blow some air in this hole. If this is the same, you blow air on that hole and you push it against the retainer. And uh, that should be fully seated. And there we go. And there we have it. There we have the installation. Now we're gonna get eight check balls. Like I said, uh, it would be nice if all these uh, Thor Long, this type of uh, check balls would be included. That would complete the job. And the little mistake that I made, I didn't notice about the uh, spring, that it is a white spring instead of orange. Okay, seven check balls. Install our spacer plate. Put our cover on it. Let's not put any bolts in the, on it yet. Let's continue with this. So step two, all models, use the separator plate gasket if you're using bonded or not. It has this slot, discard original clutch select valve springs and use the new black springs provided gasket without this slot, reuse the original springs. Okay. And that's talking about the, uh, so I noticed that the, uh, the Gen 5 models, they don't like those springs. And uh, so let's see here. But I mean, I did have an issue with the 2 3 upshift. It was a double, double shift. And I went a little bit crazy on that thing and trying to look for the problem. And all right. So it says if separator plate gasket you're using has this slot discard original clutch leg valve springs and use the new ones okay if i have this i put the new springs so i guess if you don't have this then you reuse your original springs let's read that again all models use the separator plate gasket you're using bonded or not has this slot discard original clutch select valve springs and use new black springs provided. Gasket without this lot, reuse original spring. All right, so we're on the money. And the way I've, I've, I've done it is uh, if it's a Gen 4, I run the springs. If it's a Gen 5, but uh, I'm gonna start looking at that little slot on all Gen 5 from now on. And uh, because I tried it, I tried it on some Gen 5s too, after what I went through. Uh, I even tuned to 2 3 shift. I did all kinds of different stuff to it, and I could never figure out what the hell was going on. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to take those springs off and put the original ones back on. And sure enough, that fixed the problem. So probably I had a, I had a problem with the. Uh, with that slot on the gasket or I didn't have that slot on that gasket I'm just gonna snug him tight tight and I'm gonna come back with my uh, torque wrench and and torque him but for now I guess that's all she wrote uh, I already installed the uh, the pressure switches on this thing but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, on camera I'm gonna do one so now that I have this five bolts on there and it's not going to be separated, I'm going to put this to the side. We'll get this over here. And actually I got a bunch of leftovers because there's always, there, there's always one leftover, one of each, out of each bag, and I save them.
So, just to show you that I do a lot of these. <laughs> when I do a lot of these. There's only one left over in one of these bags, right? And I, I kind of save them down here. See, I got one here. And I try to finish these first before opening the bag. So let's count the bags that I have here. And then I have another kit that has more bags. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And this is going to be eight because I'm going to use one of, one of the leftovers that I have here. And then on the other kit that one of the other guys likes to use, uh, I have more of these. Like maybe 10 or 15 more of those bags. So yeah, you, you get them left over. And uh, okay, so. And then I just save them. I just, <laughs> I just save them. I don't throw them away. I try to get rid of the, the loose ones first before opening another bag. So those little baggies, the, the, as they come, as I finish the loose ones, I mean, I just put another new bag in there. All right. So, yeah, that's how many, that's how much of these units come to the shop. So, I'll just take this. I just destroyed it just for uh, illustration purposes only. Now, I got this little tool, but you can do it without the tool. And I usually put this over here. Uh, you can put this on the hole, on the bench or whatever and because you have the plunger in the back back here so i lubricate this thing and kind of like get this thing in there i actually like to help it with my fingers that's why i don't do it like this freestyle because i i actually pick up this but it's hard to do it here in the air because I'll be pushing the plunger. Let me go over here where I do it all the time. And it's going to be off camera, but <laughs> over there, it, it goes right in. It goes right in. All right, so I'm going to put this on the side right here because we're going to do some taco. Taco here. There is, we're going to put it up, taco upside down like a taco. You know, fold it like a taco. And then just kind of like direct it in there, push it down. And sometimes they just fall in like that one. You don't have to do a lot of work to it no more. And then you have the little stepping little deal, put it in there. I kind of like guide it towards this side, make sure it's nice and centered. And then now that we got this thing in the plunger, it's always easier to have, have it supported. So you put it in the hole like that, and then you just inject it to it. I guess that's the kind of like an easy word, like you inject the seal into it, and then you get these, this tool again, and I just like to mold it. And then I take it to my vacuum uh, setup over there, and I check it for, check it for leaks. I vacuum test though, so I'm gonna vacuum that right now, but off camera. Uh, once I'm done with it, but I mean, that's that's what it is. Put all of these back in here. Oh, forgot that one. I have two kits because one of the guys dropped dropped this piece and bent it. So the other kit is the one that they are using. And I'm using that one. So there we go. Let's uh, continue with this thing. Okay, do it like a taco, put it in there. Uh, it's kind of self explanatory once you do a bunch of these. Uh, it says you air check it with the washer. You know, final testing. I actually go to my vacuum pump and the tuning. And that's about it for part one. This is part one. We're gonna go to, uh, after the installation, we're gonna do the Transgo tuning, tow and pro. And then after, well, we're gonna drive it first without the tune, without the tow and pro tune. Then we're gonna do the tow and pro tune for another part. 
and then or maybe we'll just do that in one part like the test drive without it and then tone pro tune and then the part three will be a full tune uh power enrichment uh i'm probably not going to do the afrs you know for the map tuning and um, mass airflow tuning you know because that's for a long long thing but i'll do all of the parameters that are changed to uh free up those extra ponies that are hidden under that those ls motors all right well you know what to do and uh transgo thank thanks for uh for the hat and the banner uh and i guess i'll talk to you guys later on that white spring and i barely just caught it. it's my fault it's my bad uh but anyways thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for part two and stay tuned for part three and uh i guess i'm gonna put this on a uh on a what do you call those things a watch list or list or, or something like that i forgot the name of what it's called uh anyways see you guys later part two